Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mo's. In today's episode we're going to be taking a little look at a little Honda um, that's just come in. I've serviced this machine for about two or three years on the bounce and the owner just bought it back into, um, last night to say that it's not starting and it's got no spark. He has replaced this spark plug and there's still no spark on the machine so um, he's trying to get it back for this weekend if I can get it to run. But obviously these machines it could be a call or it could need parts ordered up and we have to wait and see. But either way he's dropped it on for me to have a quick little look at and uh, we'll try and get it running from this weekend if we can. It's quite an old girl, but we should see how we get on. If this is your first time watching Mixed Mo's, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two of them on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's try and get this little old lawnmower to spark and start. Right, here it is. Let me just shut the old barn door up a touch because it's got that old sunlight coming through. Uh, here it is, little HR21, I think it is, off the top of my barnet. HR21, uh, HR21, and it's got a no spark issue. Um, I have already tested the machine and there's definitely no spark coming out of here whatsoever. Um, he's put a brand new um, spark plug in there. This is a flathead version, this is not the overhead valve version. Um, as I say, he would like it back this weekend if he could, and today is a Friday. Um, so it doesn't leave me very, very long to diagnose it and get it running. Uh, but there definitely is no spark on this machine. Um, I, have, I have already confirmed that already. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is I want to take off the airbox cover, uh, the top cover, um, and possibly the carburetor itself, to take all the housing off um, to loose all of that. So it's one bolt here, one bolt here. Uh, be a couple over these side here, undo these two wing nuts, and then uh, we'll go from there. So let's see how we get on. So this machine has been coming to me for about, about three or four years, something like that, and it's never ever been a problem, but um, it's, not a, it's not a young girl no more. She's quite an old girl. And parts are quite readily available, but I don't carry them in stock, definitely not. Let's take that off, air filter, and that's okay. Now he says he hasn't used it much since the last service uh, that it's had, which is okay. I've got tools absolutely everywhere because I was working on another project, and as always, my project mowers will take second seat to, uh, to any customer machine. So one bolt there to take off. One bolt, we have a short one goes at the back. We'll have a couple more around this side. Let me spin the machine round so that we can uh, get the rest of the uh, bits and pieces off. Okay, next to take off will be this little tiny air box up the top. One bolt there. And that'll be a, there'll be a crankcase breather on the back of this somewhere. I think there's one more bolt to have off as well, from what I remember. And then you've got a couple of bolts on the back here, which hold the, um, the, the carburetor assembly on. That might be a bit too, a bit too long to get into there. Let's grab a, a short extension. And change that up for a shorty. One there, and one there. I'll turn that fuel off just for argument's sake. And with those little bolts now removed, there's a little tiny air breather pipe around the back here, which needs to come off as well, uh, which is a crankcase breather, which I can probably just get to just by a pair of um, L-shaped pliers, and just try and remove that little hose clamp, there it goes, that's that off, and now that should come all the way out I think, he thinks, that's it, there it goes, all right. so that's that all off, let's put these bits and bobs in the box so I don't forget where they all go and don't lose no, no bits and pieces. I'll put that to one side for now. 
not losing her bits, do we? Okay. And then you've got another couple of 10 mils here. You've got one here to do. And then one here to do. I might have to change back to my, uh, my longer size extension. Just to give me a bit more room, a bit more vava voom. That was well on there. So then we're going to remove the uh, pull cord housing itself, just for ease of access. I'm not dropping no bits now, Mick. <laughs> One over here somewhere. That's that one. Whip that off. That can go to one side for now. That's out of the way. And then you can remove uh, the tank assembly. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just going to remove this um, this fuel line hose as well. I've had a bit of clean up here. Uh, this engine is absolutely covered in stuff. The flywheel's rusted to anything. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to remove this fuel line just here, just for ease of access. And then I'll come back to you once I've done that. Okay, fuel line's now been disconnected and I can now lift the tank um, and pull cord assembly all out in one go. That's good. Um, so up in here, um, we, got, we have our flywheel, which is standard. Um, and inside, um, we'll have all the, all the um, coil mechanisms and what have you. So I'm guessing init initially, um, we're gonna have to take all this uh, flywheel off uh, to get in here because the coil wire comes up from underneath, here it is here, and goes up inside here. So I think the first thing we need to do is to actually just get this flywheel off um, to expose the coil, um, get the coil tested, and uh, possibly judging by all the stuff that's on, on here, we may need to get underneath to actually um, clean inside and all that sort of good stuff. So all that's required is to undo the four of uh, the three 10 mil bolts up here, which will take the cup off. Now this hasn't been off for a while, so we could have issues, but we should see. So another three 10 mils there, that will release the cup. All that dirt there, look. And then um, we've got the uh, the flywheel nut to undo. I should give it a bit of a shock treatment with a hammer first, just so I know what's going on. And then uh, we'll go from there. I have got an air chisel, which I might put in the top here to try and loosen it with a, a bit of prying underneath to try and get this flywheel off. But uh, this is not gonna be an easy thing. So let me get that nut undone first, bit of a shock treatment, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie to you. That was a pig. Um, I managed to undo the nut. I put my air hammer on and the air hammer didn't even touch it. So I had to revert back to the old school methods, which involves the biggest of hammers you have and uh, put the nut on and uh, give it a darn good wallop with a bit of a prop at the same time. Uh, that's what it required. Here's all my magnets and flywheels. And as you can see, lots of debris in here um, built up over the years. And that magnet there, I dare say, is not doing a great deal there. That is cleaning off because um, the magnet is actually behind there. There it is. And as you can see, lots of uh, lots of debris in there. So that is clearing off of a wire brush before we do anything else. Um, here's a coil, and the first one I'm going to do. Oh, there's a keyway. Don't lose that, Mick. Or we will be in trouble. Um, we've got a little condenser as well, so it could be a condenser issue on here. I need to get this coil cleaned up, tested, before I do anything, and a darn good clean. So I've got some gunk off um, stuff here, and literally a bit of a shake up, and just clean the area up best I can. Get me a uh, me air blower, and um, clean these areas up best I can. Um, it could be a coil issue. There's, there has been a connection here been made which could be a bit loose, need to check that out. That doesn't look brilliant, actually. Uh, check that connection out there. And a good clean up, a general tidy up. And I'll come back to once I've done that, uh, just so I've got more of a sterile environment to work in. And um, just so uh, I, I know what's going on. Then, then we can move on uh, to the next step. So give us two ticks, just a clean up, and I'll be back once I've done that. 
Okay, so that's all now been cleaned off. Um, under here, because um, we've got a coil and a condenser, that tells me we've got a set of points under here somewhere. So I've got to undo these two eight mils, one here <coughs> and one just here. Undo that. There we go, paint that off. That's quite clean in there to be fair. And in here we've got a set of points, um, a little, um, little cleaner, there's your condenser. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rotate this, put a nut back on it, just rotate this, um, rotate this crankshaft and just want to see if these points open and close. Right, I've got you zoomed right in as far as I can, as close as I can get you. Now I put the nut back on the crankshaft here and here's your set of points just here. And what we're looking for is when we open up, uh, when we turn this crankshaft, we're looking for these points to open and close. That's the idea. So that's closed and there's open, just there. So that movement there is working. We have got a set of points that are, like, that are working in regards to a gap is being set. So that's good. I just want to inspect those points because um, they need to be cleaned. Um, they don't look brilliant. A bit of, there's a bit of furring on them. So I'm giving them a bit of a grind off, a bit of a clean. They are a bit pitted. Um, so I'm getting an emery board, a bit of contact cleaner, and um, just going to clean the inside of the points. I'm going to pull the points open an emery board inside there, clean that off. There's a bit of oil on here as well, which is fine because the pad should, should keep it clean anyway. I'm then going to remove this coil and I'm uh, just going to clean this, this coil edge up as well. Um, it could be uh, uh, three or four failures here. It could be the points have failed, the condenser has failed, or the coil has failed. And it's a question of elimination to find out which one is which. But until we get all three sort of working and um, cleaned up, we won't really know. So a bit of sandpaper on here, a bit of um, an emery board in there, just to clean those points up and uh, we can, we can test a coil uh, via the condenser. If not, it would be a new set of points and a new condenser. I, I don't suspect the coil is gone. I suspect that the points have failed. Generally, the points are the first to fail. Right, I've got you as close as I can get you, but I need to, need to work at the same time. So I've got a, um, an emery board here for doing the old nails. I bought a pack of them. All I'm going to do is just literally going to get inside here. I might just turn that crankshaft around a smidge just to give me a bit more, a bit more opening. That'd be them in a closed position. I should be able to get in there with a, my fingers, like so. I'll try and try and show you for demonstration purposes. Let me get a screwdriver. <clears throat> I can pry open the back of the points and see where you go. Pry open the back of the points, and then I can get my emery board in and just literally just reface these points. And all I'm doing is just tidying them up, getting rid of any high edges, any pittings. This is a bit of all coming off of there, you see. That that all that all will uh will aid in the points to fail. When you get to a certain point, just snap that bit of emery board off. Like so. Open them back up and go back in there again. Now when you work on the older machines Nine times out of ten, it's the points that have failed because they just, they just get furred up. So I'm going to get a bit of carburetor cleaner now on those. If I can find my carburetor cleaner, that is. I had it here two seconds ago. I don't know if it is. That's WD-40. There's my contact cleaner. There it is right in front of me. little tiny shot of that with the points open. Open them back up again. Another little clean. Good. I'm gonna get me air compressor. With me air gut with me uh Air hose, blow that off, open the points up first. See if I can be uh, so. Uh, that's it. I have a quick inspection of them point spaces now. Yeah, they look better. Yeah, there's a little tiny hole, a little tiny bit of pit on, the, on this back end of a point, not too bad.
so we're happy with that. Um, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this um, remove this coil. This is a fixed coil. We can't adjust these, but I want to clean this this surface edge up here, and then I want to get on and do the um, the flywheel as well because that flywheel was um, has got lots of dust on it, and that won't help if you're not getting the air gap. That's not going to help either. So yeah, clean, take this off. One bolt here, one bolt there. That'll lift off. And then just clean up with a, a wire wheel or something. Just clean this edge up here, clean it up, and uh, also clean it around by the bolt holes and the post it sits on as well. So give that a good clean and then uh, represent it back onto the machine. Okay, so um, core's now been cleaned. Just undid it, lifted it off slightly, put some sandpaper in here. That's all been cleaned up. All the posts have been cleaned up as well. The points have been cleaned up. Um, all these connections are good. Um, this little switch here um, it seems to be working as well. It's doing, it's making the current contact it should do. It can't go any further, so that's making it all the right contact. So I'm happy with that without any uh, electrical testing, of course. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put it all back together, put the flywheel back on, put the cover back on, and uh, just give it a test. Try and just try and spin it over to see if we don't get a spark or not. When I get to that point, I'll come back to you and then we'll go from there. But if not, then I'll have to go down the road of testing uh, the points, the condenser, uh, the switch, all that sort of good stuff. So I'm hoping just for a quick little fix here, uh, clean the points up and away we should go. That's the theory. We should wait and see. Okay, so this is where we is. Um, I took it all apart and now I did get two or three um, intermittent sparks off the plug. Okay, uh, just very quick sensation. Um, nothing... Um, uh, repeatedly, it, it was very, very quick, and uh, that was all I got after that. I have regapped the point uh, between uh, 12 and 15 foul uh, as per the manual. Um, did it again, a couple more sparks, but then lost the spark again uh, intermittently, and uh, nothing since. So, what I've done is I've got a multimeter down here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm trying to prop it up somewhere where you can see it. I know Rusty was having problems with propping his up. He, he, used a, he just used a, a socket on his or something. Let me try and wedge that in here so it stays in there. A bit more sensible. There you go. Can you see that? I don't know. Let's put it down here. Um, let's put it somewhere here where you can see it. Let's stick it in there. How's that? that all right? See that there? Yeah, there you go. So I've just done a quick little primary, primary check on this coil. Let's put that into there. And stick that on top of the old boot. Coming at about 6.5 on one end, 6.3, let's get a decent feed off of it, 6.4, 6.4 on there. So that coil, that coil in my eyes is a good coil. Nothing wrong with a coil. Um, so what I've done is I've rang a bloke up and I told him what, what my diagnosis is and I think it's actually this, this little set of points here uh, are cooked. Uh, there's a bit of black blacking on, on the front of a point just there. Um, so I've ordered a new set of points up and I've also ordered a new um, condenser up as well. You can get those kits off of Amazon for 24 quid, 25 quid for those. Daylight robbery. Um, they're coming tomorrow. So um, I should try and fit a new set of points on and a condenser on, and um, we'll go from there. But this will be part one of the video, and then um, I'll do a part two. I was a bit suspicious of the uh, HT lead boot at first, but um, that's actually good and, and caused no problems at all. So leave this video here. This will have to sit on the bench until tomorrow, and I'll come back tomorrow, and uh, hopefully by the time the points turn up, we can have a, another diagnosis into it and see if we can't get this machine to spark and do what it should be doing. Okay, so part one of the HR21 um, debacle. Um, as I say, I did get a few sparks off of the machine. Uh, nothing amazing, just a few intermittent sparks. I thought, here we go, we're good to go, and uh, the spark died again. I've tried manipulating stuff around and what have you, and I've set the points twice, and both times I'm getting an intermittent spark and nothing. So what I'm guessing is the core is good, but the condenser's not working. That, that's my that's my sort of my hope and my theory. Um, apart from that, um, you can get a brand new coil and condenser and points from Australia. That'll take three weeks. Um, I've not seen any UK suppliers for brand new kits as of yet, but I have been able to find the points and the condenser off of Amazon for about £25. So I spoke to a bloke and he said, yeah, get it done. And um, hopefully we can get the machine up and running within the next sort of two or three hours tomorrow. And uh, we'll be good to go. So if you've got any um, suspicions of what you think this may be, let me know. But I think it is condenser and points because um, the points are a little bit black and the condensers do just fail 
Um, judging on what happened with my um, Decumpsy engine on the fly mo, I fit a new set of points and a condenser on that, and away we went with a spark. So hopefully um, it's the same sort of thing. That's what I'm basing it upon. If this is your first time watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two. I'm on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy.